tougher than I thought. Pang Tong, what have you done? Thank you! My lord! What is this? Hear those voices, my lord? The people of Yi province are happy. These people... They were waiting for me. Go on. Go to them. Excellent! This is... You, you're hurt! It seems... I will be making my exit earlier than planned. Duga Liang. It is in your hands. Though Pang Tong was lost, cheers of joy from Liu Bei's army and his peasant followers flooded Loa Castle. Liu Bei could not help but think that this was not the right path. But to avenge Pang Tong's death, and to answer the fervent desires of the people of Yi, Liu Bei advanced his army on the Yi capital of Chengdu. For he had finally made up his mind to attack Liu Zhong. Meanwhile, hearing of Pang Tong's death, Zhuge Liang left Guan Yu in charge of Jing and set out to join the battle. He joined up with Liu Bei, and together they looked to swiftly capture Chengdu. Driven by the lost dreams of his fallen friend and ally, the dragon would soar over the hills of Yi, where the feathers of the phoenix lay scattered in the wind. All was proceeding just as Juga Liang had envisioned. Liu Bei captured Yi, claiming the territory as his own. And the land found itself divided into three, with Liu Bei of Shu, Cao Cao of Wei, and Sun Quan of Wu. At long last, Juga Liang's three kingdom strategy had come to fruition. Against this backdrop, the province of Jing, located at the center of these three kingdoms, grew more important than ever. While relations between Shu and Wu had worsened as they fought for control of the province, that all changed when Wei invaded Hanzhong. Liu Bei proposed a ceasefire with Sun Quan and returned to him the eastern portion of Jing. And in return for the land, he asked that Wu participate in a joint attack against Wei at Hefei. Just as they promised, Wu attacked Hefei. For a while, Jing once again knew peace. Having secured Jing, Zhuge Liang sent Huang Zhang and other top generals to take the fight to Wei. The battle would take place on Han Zhang's Mount Dingjuan. It was there that Zhuge Liang realized that the land of virtue they had sought for so long was finally within their grasp. <laughs> the enemy ranks are as clear as day. That's quite a shot! It's too far! There's no point! Unless you're as good as me! Stability to the kingdom of Shu. <laughs> After all, he 
Even we old folks have to think about the future sometimes. What a view. It's kind of spoiled by all those way soldiers, mind you. Cao Cao of Wei, Sun Quan of Wu, and now Lord Liu Bei of Shu. It is just as Lord Zhuge Liang predicted. The Three Kingdom strategy has been realized. Lord Ma Chao's father was killed by Cao Cao. He will be determined to have his revenge. I am indebted to Lord Liu Bei for taking me in. I will do what I must to aid Shu. I hear there's some officer in the enemy ranks who likes to dance on the battlefield. I wonder what's wrong with him. They say Sha Ho Yuan is quite an archer. Ha! He's no match for you, my lord. All of these mighty warriors have been drawn here by the magnetism of Lord Liu Bei's personality. Shields. I could do with one of those. I have no idea what Lord Zhuge Liang is thinking. I mean, I know he's a genius, but... Liu Bei! Gain land! People! Happy! I fight! Protect Liu Bei! If only Lord Pang Tong were alive. Now that our Lord has a land of his own, morale is high amongst the people. If we can win this battle, then we will be that much closer to uniting the land. The enemy strategist is a man named Suma Yi. I wonder if he's any good. Lord Wei Yan's a bit frightening, but he's good to have on your side. Why does he hate Lord Juga Liang so? Check out his head. See that pointy bit? That means he's a rebel. He can't help it. My Lord Liu Bei has truly gone up in the world. Now he is a mighty leader of men. I remember him from the early days. At first, it was just me and him against the world, with a few others. But I know he values my support. The two of us have come a long way. I'll show you all that I've still got what it takes. I'll do anything necessary to protect this land. Let's go! Begin the march! Understood. Cao Cao has set up camp on Mount Dingjun. If we can secure the mountain, Han Zhong is as good as ours. We will begin with the foothills. Wei Yan, you head west. Ma Chao, secure the central garrison. We win! Liu Bei! Happy! My blade belongs to Lord Liu Bei now. For his vision, it will slice through the enemy! Ha! 
center of the battlefield is too crowded. Lords Ma Chao and Wei Yan are unable to advance. The enemy's gathering over there. In that case... Our friends are in need. Get over and help them at once.
have Mount Ding Juin surrounded. Watch the attack. All units, we must hold out until an opening presents itself. I hope you realize you have no chance of victory. Enemy supply depots have been discovered on Mount Tianda. Lord Yan Yan is leading a the unit there now. If we can burn their supplies, the enemy will despair. We should assist Lord Yan Yan. The success of my battle plan depends on your performance. You have truly earned your reputation. Such a display will boost the morale of our troops. We secure Han Chong. Lord Guan Yu should attack Shu Chong. Fight me now! For glory! Nobody gets the upper hand on me! I must retreat! This is not the end! I have lost count of these enemy officers over the years.
to go home and rest. Out of my way, boy. I have no use for any but Sauta himself. Your aim is remarkable. Nobody gets the upper hand on me! No! Enemy! Strong! I win! Ken, we must hold them back. It's do or die. Watch and learn! The arrows shall rain down upon you! The remaining formations I have lost half of these enemy officers over the years. You have truly earned your reputation. Such a display will boost the morale of our troops. What a disaster. I have no excuse for troubling you with this rabble. You saved me. I'm sorry. away fast, I'll say that much. 
Cao Cao is gone, I see. He said something about being a decoy. Just a bad loser. I hope you are right. Maybe. Lord Guan Yu. At Hong Zhong, Cao Cao seemed almost too calm and collected. Zhuge Liang could not help but feel uneasy. With Han Zhong under its control, Shu had stabilized as a country and was gaining momentum. As if in celebration of their good fortune, Guan Yu marched north from Jing and attacked Wei at Fan Castle. If they could bring down Fan Castle, there would be nothing left standing between them and the Han capital of Shichang. With everything going so well, there was no reason to expect that their Wu allies would betray them. However, no matter what Zhuge Liang did, his worries could not be eased. Then, as the stage switched to east of Han Zhang at Fan Castle in Jing, waves of emotion flooded over Guan Yu as he gazed upon Fan Castle, where Cao Ren lay in wait. For finally, the dream that Liu Bei had pursued for so many years was about to become a reality. To forge a path to that world of virtue, Guan Yu and his sons would fight to the bitter end. The God of War's battle plan was flawless. That is, until the surprise attack came. <laughs> 